Привет всем! Welcome to the new video. We're going to be painting this Stalinet's tractor. Let's get cracking on. Hello guys, what you're looking at is a Stalinet's tractor. It's actually this Trumpeteer kit. Basically built straight from the box, built it quite a while ago sat on the shelf oh let's see over well, nearly two years and um didn't move until my patreon panzer cat chose this as the next subject and this was always envisaged to be it's actually a test piece for something else i'm going to work on but as you can see i've worked on placing the tractor in situ into the earth and I haven't videoed this bit, but I do cover that in my Patreon vlogs, but really, I mean, things are very straightforward. The kit, as I said, built out of the box. The only modification being that I haven't placed on the seat. The idea is, of course, that this thing is being, more, well, sort of abandoned. You know, it's like maybe not used as much maybe it got stuck maybe it's waiting for some spot parts it's got that sort of story to tell of course we're going to add a figure to it but over the next uh, 24 hours basically i'm going to try and do the painting stage as quickly as possible so by doing all the groundwork i've got the sort of grunt stuff done and the build is really straightforward anyways so let me just quickly introduce you to the plan of action. Okay, I did actually, I typed out a plan, but like <laughs> with all plans, you know, first contact with the enemy, they do fall apart. Everything's flexible. It's just a guidance notes for myself. I just wrote it out so I know what we'll be doing. But today, and uh, hopefully today, we're doing some weathering. We're going to be doing the airbrushing. We're going to do the painting. can do all the painting. And because I want to do this quickly, of course, you, you guys won't really know, do you? If... If I do this in a day or a month, I'm going to stitch it all together. But trust me, I'm going to try and do as much as I can in a day. So the first thing we're going to do is prime everything, prime the base work. And we're going to use the surfaces from Mr. Hobby. Combine the black with the brown to give sort of a, a dark base steely tone. But that isn't going to be sprayed exclusively on the tractor. You can do all the groundwork. So I want to get all that shading in use this i think i'll try this rapid thinner it's meant to dry quicker but i still need to give this some time to set uh, what i haven't got here is a hair dryer we'll be using a hair dryer to hopefully speed up the process so that's the first thing that we're going to do then we shall apply hairspray you're going to use hairspray chipping technique using hairspray because i haven't got anything else i haven't got any chipping fluid i would i would prefer chipping fluid but let's go back to the way it was always done then we're going to base paint the actual tractor. I'm going to use Tamiya paints. And I've chosen a light blue. And I'll probably mix it with some white to lighten it up. Because we want to get it all faded. And um, the idea here is, of course, is it's, it's civilian. We're not doing a military theme here. And um, we'll probably mask off this area around here to sort of show that that area, you know, it would have been covered by the seat um would be a, a different color so i'll get on with with that point and um we'll go straight into the chipping as well the idea here is don't let these paints totally set we'll mix them with alcohol and hopefully it's a little bit more fragile a paint and we do a lot of the scratching using toothpicks or metal instruments be quite selective be a bit clever about it and we'll give this thing some wear effects so uh let's crack on i'll just do a montage next and then we can go and i'll explain what's happened and we'll go on to the next bits
Okay, so first thing is the uh, classic wash technique. What is it? What's this? What's this, basically? We can, we can do this a couple of ways. In this case, we're gonna use out of the uh, bottle products, Afri -Core, Africa Core Wash. What is it? It's paint, that's all it is. It's enamel paint. It's a little bit more dilute than like a Humbro enamel was. Back in the day, you used to take Humbro enamel uh, add some thinner and make your own washes up. Now, <laughs> little known fact about this is that even though this is dilute, it's not dilute enough. If we apply it straight from the bottle, which we can do, it's fine, uh, it tends to be just a little bit too dark. What we want is a tone on top of there, that's all, and it's a light tone, just to blend all this together. And of course, our theme here, of course, is a rusty or disused tractor. So what we're gonna do is thin that down using some enamel thinner. 
The other way of course to do this is with oil paints and use oil thinner. Application, instead of the, this is the difference, instead of the detailed wash that goes into all the recesses, which we're going to do later, this is an overall application. So a large brush is perfectly fine for this. Uh, I'll show you the montage, you'll see what I'm going to do. And we'll just apply it all over. The idea is just simply to get this overall blended brown tone on top of that blue. We don't want to kill the blue, we don't want to kill off all these tonal variations, but we set the theme for what this is, yeah. Also, we can work that towards the uh, dirt portions as well, which is the sort of next thing that we're going to do. I'll explain, uh, let's just run through the montage and then I'll recap on the next stuff that I do. So let's, uh, let's hit this with a wash. Okay, that's another two stages completed. The filter, as they call it, or a light coat of tone on top, whatever you want to call it, it's all paint. I think that confuses a lot of modelers nowadays, all these different terminologies, washes, 
filters, pin washers, etc. If you think of them just as paint in different concentrations, it might make things easier. It's all really about the application. They give everything different names, really sell them to you, but uh, you can get away with uh, very few products, to be honest. But I mean, they all do have their uses. Okay, the first thing we do, and if we go back to this analogy that I like to use, popping detail, we're gonna use Iraqi sand, the infamous Iraqi sand. Is it Iraqi sand? No, it isn't. It's like a boff color, yeah? It doesn't matter. Whatever you've got in your collection, what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop the detail and use old school dry brush technique uh, to pop a lot of the detail. We're gonna do the groundwork uh, surrounding the actual vehicle itself. And I'm gonna do this now because I'm gonna add vegetation quite soon. So that's gonna be, a lot of this is gonna be difficult to get to after I add that vegetation. We're gonna do it overall. And um, it's gonna pop things up. And then the second thing that we need to do, I'll explain in the next clip because it's uh, um, a little bit more tricky. So let's, uh, let's get on with that. Okay, that was really easy, straightforward stuff. Uh, you can see the change to the groundwork and overall with that lightened texture. Quick confession as well, I used another tone as well on top of that Iraqi sand. It used like a grey, uh, grey sand colour or whatever it was, just to highlight it even more. Okay, the next bit is really um, something I haven't done in quite a long time and something I used to do all the time, pigments. And they seem to have, uh, have they fallen out of favour with models? I'm not too sure. Um, I do like to use them when they have got application. They certainly have an application here. Uh, mainly, we have areas of correction to do. Um, I think if I'd been a bit more careful when I sprayed the earth colour and made sure that I hit everything that had dirt on it, I wouldn't have to do this. But at the moment, I've got, like, hopefully you can see that inside there, I've got blue earth, uh, which is uh, inevitable, really. Um, if I'd been a little bit more judicious with my spray painting, I could have actually hit those areas there. I've got mud caked on here, here. There should be some down there, but I didn't, I didn't get that done anyways. I should have thought a little bit more about the placement of the dirt on here actually as Pablo pointed out because I've got a big clump how did it get on there did the track lift it up I doubt it anyways I need to correct that so I'm going to use pigments uh, use what you've got basically but I've got a, a darky earth colour here and the actual tones that I like using on vehicles tend to be the uh, lighter sandy colours but I'm going to make a mixture I've got a dark tone here ironically called Russian earth and what we'll do is we'll apply it in areas here uh, the problem with pigments is basically their adhesion yeah um, they don't stick on they can get wiped off pretty easily so there is pigment fixes there's all sorts of methods but if you've watched my other videos sort of the preference I have right at the moment is using these um, 
pigments that have a binder with them from Life Color. I really like using them. But we'll go back to the traditional pigments, blot them on, and then we're going to leave them there. And then we're going to use oil paints again to um, create areas of blend between the vehicle itself and and the actual mud. So I'm going to sort of blot all this on. I'll go back to some washes, the same wash I used before, and blend it on top. And then we'll have another recap. And then um, I think we might be adding vegetation next. Okay, with those pigments, I think I've more or less corrected those areas. It'll do for now. There might be some areas of blue dirt, but basically there, and also added a few different tones of dirt overall um, to the diorama base. Uh, I said I was going to do a vegetation next. No, I'm not. I want to finish off the weathering, okay? Now, um, <sighs> streaking dust on here would be maybe a okay sort of effect but i'm gonna play the car that basically the thing's been sat for a while so it's had a few rain sessions already on it so the dust would have been washed right off of it nothing wrong with doing that we'll save that for a different different time instead what we're going to do is a couple of things uh, we're going to add some light rust effects use this very sparingly because it really is quite a powerful effect so we're just going to hit a few bolts and apply it in like minuscule proportions just in certain areas yeah to give a obviously that fresh rust effect that really bright rust then we're going to add some streaks and we're going to try and make them as minuscule as possible so we can use oil paints for that I've got a dark brown here I've got another sort of a, a gray brown as well uh, trying to keep them super small I'm going to try and use a toothpick and a cotton swab or q-tip depending on where you're from to sort of pull these down and then I think we'll call the weathering done for the first day
Okay, that's the uh, basic weathering finished, I think, now. I can't think of much more else to do. Maybe some metallic effects a bit later on. Let's, uh, let's go on the groundwork now. I'm just going to take a selection of what I have. And the idea is to build it up all around there to make sure the thing looks as if it's nearly as if it's part of nature. So uh, I'm just going to crack on and we'll see how this looks like in a second. Okay, so here we are, day one. This is where I got up to. With that last point, just adding in that ready-made foliage, pretty easy, just super glued it into place. The idea was to tuck it in to all these nooks and crannies to make it look as if the thing's been overgrown. And then I tried to uh, dry brush on some green onto the grass uh, that was on the tracks there to maybe give it the appearance as if some of that grass is growing now uh, on the mud that was actually on the tracks. So uh, let's continue this and of course we want to add a figure and we'll add some more interest to this so uh, let's crack on to the next part. Okay so now we're moving on with the figure which is going to be the sort of main central well the only character in this little vignette. Vignette rather than a diorama it's just simply a vehicle it's not telling the story or anything more like base work in a figure, but the figure adds that human perspective, adds scale to it, as you'll see. I uh, have a civilian um, figure, which obviously fits in with the theme as well. I think it's like a young boy. I'm going to mount him, paint him, prime him, and uh, let's see how he looks. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah, 
just watched Giannis shoot the fucking bitch ass Suns win the other night as well. Like, man, they're fried. I didn't mm-hmm. even think I would have been fried six minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good ass idea. Yeah. Get him in. I'll call him out like I'm telling him. Like, no, not, not Elmer. I'm in synagogue. <laughs> and he's like, I know you really want the time to go into the bathroom and close the door, but you get a little gassy, you got a little gas. Nah, so man. please do what you say to me in your locker room. Yeah, you're not going to get it. That's, that's you know, and then, and then not use it for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Those niggas are so fried. I, I ran through to be a restaurant enforcer. <laughs> I decided to use my gas money on like an, the most obnoxious restaurant <laughs> in the world. McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Right. We were eating Blade Runner and it had fermented mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. I remember we went, we ate there and they had that one fucked up salad. Fuck your salad. I'm like cigars and a poster man. Yeah. Bill Angle smoking here. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I've had many. I've had many. You definitely changed it. It was very too. funny, right? And he was like, sir? And he was like, yeah. yeah. College. Yeah. For some reason, there's an organized filling station. Okay guys, here we are, the finished vignette, the Stalinet's tractor, adding in that figure, and just a few little touches suggested by my Patreons, the shovel, the repair equipment, maybe some radiator fluid or some fuel or something, so that guy's there, he's basically there to do some work on this thing that's stuck in the mud, and uh, maybe ready for another season on the farm, so... Uh, Quite a nice little project, not a big diorama, just a small vignette, which as I mentioned before is maybe a vehicle and one or two figures. The figure really more conveying the scale of the subject and in this case, this small little scenario, you know, a little explanation of perhaps why it's in this sort of semi-abandoned state or maybe deteriorated state. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. All your comments are welcome. I try and answer them. Remember that I do have a Patreon where you can influence and ask me questions. Obviously, um, the people that are choosing my builds at the moment are my Patreons. And um, also, I do one-to-one -one vlogs explaining what I'm up to. So if you want to be part of the community on the Patreon, really happy to see you over there. In any case, this one's a wrap, and uh, we'll be on with the next project. See you soon, guys.